Hey guys, Slough here. Um, I'm going to do a quick sort of demo regarding the MIDI event list and working with MIDI editing. Uh, a number of people have asked me about this and uh, recently some more people and uh, I, I just decided I'd do a quick, you know, audio. To, uh, nice. I wouldn't call it a tutorial, but it's just what I do. And uh, as always, there's, I'm sure, more than one way to do virtually anything in Pro Tools. So uh, I'm just going to uh, demonstrate a couple of things. Um, so I brought up a, a, a session that I did for a, a, it was a st string quartet and vocal uh, performance uh, that's actually actually going to be performed um in in finland uh next week uh but i did this stuff a while ago um and this stuff uh is like i said for string quartet so i have four uh tracks four midi tracks and they're just they happen to be going to an external uh sound module uh, a roland integra and uh, so I'll just play a little bit of this stuff from the top just so you hear a little bit of it first. where the vocal would be of course all right so um so the main thing uh you know the main environment for editing midi in pro tools uh would be the midi event list you can do stuff without the midi event list per se uh it's kind of basic but maybe i'll just show you a quick look at that first let me see uh, we're in the edit window let me make sure uh, of a couple of things here all right so the first the violin one is selected so like for example uh all right so it, it, with the first track selected I, i'm just going to hit tab as if i were going to you know region boundaries okay i'm going to hit tab again hit tab again okay so what happened uh, right now is i was tabbing across clips just like sort of region uh well <laughs> again that's from coming from the old world it, uh, it's navigating by clips just like an audio clip would so in other words the first thing that i recorded when i recorded the violin one was this part and then it got to you know i recorded it up until this point and then this ended up being another clip because i was stopping and recording and you know uh doing sections at a time and stuff so um that's one way to navigate i mean if you if you do uh uh you know if you tab and then shift tab and check the uh length you know it's going to select the clip just like audio would you know um if you do a control tab uh this is the next uh clip you know that was like three bars so it's going to behave like audio so you can nudge clips um you can um you know copy paste etc just like you normally would expect but what but if you want you can go into i'm just going into the track uh, the violin one i'm gonna go uh, whoops. Yeah, let me go to the end. Okay, so the track view selector is a CLPS for clips. I think the, this track view is kind of small or something, but I'm going to arrow down to notes. Now if I go to the top and hit tab, well, actually you started hearing what, what it does. If you hit tab, 
it actually moves to and selects notes. All right, so this was the, the first section, all right? But if I were to hit tab again, instead of going to the next clip, it's gonna go, it's gonna move to and select the ne next note. Okay, and if you look at the length of these notes, zero, four, line, three, four, line, zero, zero, zero. And you see nine, that eight. it selects that range, uh, whatever the length of that note happens to be. Also, if you are in the edit window, uh, I'm gonna move to say the, uh, Start field. All right, and I'm going to move to the right. It it displays the pitch of the note. Okay, if you move down from there, it, it'll do, show the on velocity, the attack velocity. They're calling it here. The release velocity. So this gives you a little. I mean, and if you double click on you know these values, you can. Uh, edit them and but as you see it gives you uh, limited information like if you want to change the note itself uh, or its velocity and stuff um, you could do that here in the edit window in the uh, counter display cluster um, but be aware for example what you can't do here uh, at least I've never been able to, and let me just check Cursor. quickly. Oh, no, that is the main counter, yeah. What you can't do here is, uh, like, for example, I looked at the length field here, um, zero vertical line, three vertical line, zero, zero, zero. Like, like three. And this was quantized because this was eventually exported to uh, to Sibelius for some notation that, uh, that uh, another uh, person handled for me. Uh, what you can't do is like you can't edit that length field and edit the note value at least i've never been able to do that i don't think this i don't think it works that way in the counter display cluster what you have to do is you have to get into the midi event list uh so uh let's do that let's uh, option equals all right and uh, we're at the top of the song. Table. I'm gonna go to the table. I just hit Control Option, page down. Interact with, Interact with that. So, two, yeah, here the first event here is a volume event, a controller seven. Six, zero, text field. And then you see like sixty. This is a um, a patch change, a program change. So I had uh, eighty nine and sixty five. Those were uh, you know, most com most significant by least significant byte numbers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So Eight, six, zero, let me go back. One, All right, so now I have uh, a controller one, uh, the mod for volume in this case. One, field. One, field. So I'm just arrowing down using Control Option down arrow, One, field. cursor down. One, field. So as you can see, One, field. One, field. there's a whole lot of modulation. Uh, information here. So if I go to the right column, three two text field column selected four one text field three six text field. Uh, well, that selected four that one four field. one selected at number four text was field. was a note already, but um, one text field here three six text field column three. I'm I'm just moving to the left to the right, just like in columns and down. So all this stuff below that selected note four zero text field four five text field. You see that these are mod values that are moving upwards. Um, now, if if you don't want to see all that information, go to um, uh, you bring up the filter command F, and instead of all, uh, let's do only. Okay. Uh, in the channel info, notes, check, check box. we have notes being displayed. Okay, so pretty much notes are the only thing being displayed now. So now, so I'm just going moving up through that list, and so press, if I press selected. on a note, e free text field. press selected, e free text field, e free text field. Press selected. E number free text field. Press selected. I'm just moving through, and I'm not. I'm not sure if you could hear that. It's kind of 
kind of soft in the background but the notes sound as they're selected and if you um, if you just use the down arrow it essentially does what we were doing by hitting tab it's selecting the note as you go and if you uh, here let me just move down this list to the selection or let's let's move up to the to the top um, oops to the top of the session sorry yeah starting with this one with F if you hold down the shift key Selected. 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 So I'm moving four. down, and you see that holding shift while moving the arrow down uh, selects these notes. Selected. I'm moving Selected. back up through the list field. now, and I'm sorry, I'm 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 speaking over voiceover, and it might not be clear. But anyway, the point is, holding down shift, um, you know, uh, selects multiple items, and of course you can cut, copy, paste, etc. in in all of these cases. Um, let's go now. Uh, I want to get rid of that selection. I'm just hitting return, getting to the top one vertical, one vertical, number four field. and it gets rid of the selection. OK, uh, let's uh, change uh, here. This 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 very first note, Press. Selected. this first F sharp of four. OK. So let's change where that comes in. Uh, or actually, let's let's leave that first note in so that we hear a, a proper beginning. Let's do the second note instead. Selected. E four text field. So the E. Okay. Um, Selected. Two vertical line. One vertical line. Zero zero zero. So it comes in bar two, beat one. All right. Uh, let's change it to come in bar two, beat two. So this is. Uh, <laughs> Instead of it coming on bar two, beat one, uh, let's double click. So I'm using control, option, shift, space, bar. And I'm typing in uh, two, uh, decimal two on the numpad and hitting enter on the numpad. Okay, so now this, this note comes in on the second uh, beat. Okay. Okay. So, um, let's let's do something else. Let's uh, let's just change the uh, instead of note. Uh, I mean, instead of E, let's uh, uh, let's. Uh, I'm gonna double click that note, and now I could. Type of value, um, you know, from the keyboard. Let's say uh, D four. Hit uh, now. I'm hitting return on the keyboard. Selected. D four text field. All right. So we changed it to D four. <laughs> nah, I don't like that note. So I'm gonna undo that. Undo edit main note. Okay. So now it's that E note again. So selected. E four text field. Oh. Uh, let's try. You know, if you double click it. Uh, I'm going to turn around to the controller. All right, so E is what it's, um, what E4 is what it's on now. I'm going to change it to E flat, uh, or I should say D sharp in this case, and hit uh, return. And so now D sharp 4, yeah, which doesn't sound good either, but the point is, uh, it changes the value there. Yeah, well, again, it's <laughs> I, obviously it wouldn't be a musical choice for me, but I'm just going through the motions just to show a couple of things. Um, so now let's uh, let's change the uh, vol uh, not the velocity. Well, you could change velocity here. Let me go back up to the original note. Uh, and let's, uh, you know, that's a 41 attack, so let's uh, make this like 90 or something, all right? So now that note, yeah, it's a lot louder. Here we go. Yeah, too loud, but 
Uh, let's go over. One, two, three, text field. Column four, row one. Uh, that's the release. One vertical line, zero vertical line, zero. Which I, which, uh, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure about how to hide the release information. I just, uh, I usually just leave it, but the the release velocity, but um, one, one vertical, maybe there's a, a way to hide that. One, one vertical line, zero vertical line, zero, zero, zero text field. All right, Column so five. this uh, note value is one bar, okay? Um, um, one, one vertical line, zero, vertical line, zero, 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 text field. So yeah, one bar. Now let's say I wanted to change that. What's going to happen in this case? Press selected. If you if you double click on this value, what's going to be highlighted? And this happens in the tempo uh, field. Uh, in the you know like the God, what is it called? The transport window. Like if you try to enter a tempo, if you double click. Uh, in that field or you click in that field what's going to be highlighted is the last field so like in the case of tempo you have to hit decimal point first and then enter you know 92 bpm or whatever or just 92 uh, because otherwise if you if you had a default tempo of 120 and you clicked in that field and typed 92 what you'd get is 100 20.092 you know what i mean or 0 0.920 i can't remember how it behaves but the point is <clears throat> excuse me in this case it's the same kind of thing if you double click here the ticks are going to be highlighted so let's say we wanted to have it go for two beats okay so i'm going to double click and right now the three zeros are highlighted in the length field. So I'm going to hit decimal point. Now the bar field is highlighted and it says one, but I'm going to hit zero, then decimal point two, and hit enter. So that changed it to two. If I wanted to make it one bar uh, three beats, I'm going to double click it. It's the ticks are highlighted and pressing decimal point one, decimal point three, enter. So selected one vertical line, three vertical line, zero, zero, zero. Okay, so that is the way to change uh, those values. Um, you know, with anything, of course, uh, like you'd expect. Selected, selected. Nine, zero, uh, you know, this first note, which now is going to be too long. second note is wrong um like you know if you if you just simply hit uh, delete and play it it's just gonna be gone here's the wrong note yeah so yeah um one thing that i should point out is um let me go uh, let me close this out for a moment uh, and go into uh, the edit window so let's say for example um, if I were to uh, I'm gonna try to scrub across something here okay so I just used um, I just used uh, shuttle mode to to scrub against something and I just want to show edit, you guys that when you do that, it deselects tracks. I don't know why. Um, I I never knew why. Uh, maybe it has something to do with the tool, the, the tool that's being selected. I'm not sure. Which I, I usually use the selector tool. But like, let's say, for example... I'm selecting this track, okay, and then now I'm scrubbing, right, and you see that it's not, there's no selection anymore, like the track isn't selected. Um, if you want to do stuff like selecting and cutting or whatever, you have to make sure that uh, the track is selected, because otherwise, uh, let's say, for example, let's select between uh, bars one and let's say bar five 
So here we have uh, the, the selection length four vertical line, zero, vertical line, zero, zero, zero. is four bars. And let's say I want to go transpose, all right? You'll, this is what will happen. So I'm in the event operations transpose window. Um, let's do uh, semitones. Okay, so... So two semitones, and, and when you go to the end, you see that the apply button is dimmed. That's because the tracks uh, are not selected, uh, so you won't be able to, you know, to do anything. So if I go uh, here, let's close this. Let's go back. So all four tracks are selected. Uh, let me go back to the transpose window. Apply button. Press apply button. All right, go to the beginning. Yeah, so, um, <clears throat> and uh, sometimes you'll find, uh, I find at least, that occasionally, depending on like if you've done a bunch of work, uh, you know, in a session, I, I have found that on occasion, sort of no matter what, if you try to uh, transpose things, uh, sort of like that, that apply button will be dimmed, even though you have tracks selected and you have a range selected. Um, I don't know, it inexplicably, just occasionally, it just doesn't seem to work. So if you save your uh, session, close it out, uh, I, I've, I've quit Pro Tools, relaunched it, and uh, it, it seems to work. So yeah, it's a strange quirk. I wanted to add uh, one more thing, though, uh, about the MIDI event list. Uh, sometimes people, you know, like, go to a particular location and the MIDI event list doesn't seem to update for them and uh, I just want to demonstrate uh, I'm gonna actually uh, I'm at the top of the session alright so I'm at uh, yeah bar 2 or whatever and right now the start field is you know 0 uh, bar 0 I mean that's where the playback uh, the insertion point is I'm going to uh, enter like bar 84 and hit enter okay and use control option page up and it still it still says bar 2 beat 2 even though it's it's at it's at bar 84 if I listen to the start field you know, it's at bar 84 um, so there are two things you can do it doesn't matter which you do you could either enter the number again uh, command I'm sorry asterisk 84 enter which will update the you know the uh, the view to in other words voiceovers uh, focus to be at bar 84 uh, or you could hit command H in the MIDI event list so I hit command H and now it's it, it gives you a little bit of a runway it's a bar 83 80 it's like two beats before bar 84 um, so that works. Um, you know, there's also a go to, like if you hit command G, you can go to a particular bar, but uh, that's essentially the same as doing the asterisk, uh, and then hitting the number. And the same thing happens if you go, if you try to go to a bar, it won't work the first time. I mean, visually, apparently it does, but it doesn't work for a voiceover. So you have to do that command twice anyway, might as well just use the asterisk key, uh, or hit command H. Uh, which is, I think, even easier. Um, less keystrokes. And uh, what else? Oh, and let me close the MIDI event list just to show you that, uh, let's say, I'm uh, I'm at the top of the session now, zero, vertical, line, one, bar zero, and I'm going to type, uh, I'm going to asterisk bar 45 and hit enter. So now the start field four, five, vertical, line, one, vertical, says bar 45, and now I'm going to open the uh, MIDI event list option equals so it takes me to again just a couple of beats before bar 45 so um, 
Yeah, just just to demonstrate those couple of things because uh, it is a little bit quirky, and unless you know that that's the behavior, it it might drive you a little bit crazy. So, hopefully that helps, and uh, some of you found that uh, interesting or informative. And if you have questions, of course, just post on the list, and I'll try to clarify things uh, if necessary. And I'm sure others can chime in and add their own comments and tips and tricks. So, all right, see you guys.